Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a toast to the men with your guy SD Booker Toasters. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the support. Hit that like button before we get started. Hit the like button. It's free. Hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber toaster. Also hit the notification bell so you're notified when this content drops. Let's go. Carly Russell. I'm sure everyone has heard of this, this situation, the story. I'm going to give my perspective. I'm going to give my what I think, my insight, my take on what's going on and what we can learn from it because that's what it's all about with me. We all have a story. Our lives are to be shared. Our stories are to be shared to learn, to learn from, um, not judged, not condemned as far as uh, being put in a, a lake of fire, um, but to learn. You know, we're all students and teachers at different times in life. And so uh, that's what it's all about. So she's no different. Her story is no different. We're going to look at it. We're going to break it down. And we're going to see what we can learn from it. But there's another thing going on, too, in the universe that I want to touch on. But first, let's deal with what we know. Carly Russell, I guess it's been about six days now, six days ago, Call 911 and reported that she saw a toddler walking along the highway just wearing a diaper. Uh, that's what she reported. That call ended. She calls her brother's girlfriend and tells her what's going on, allegedly. Uh, the girlfriend hears Carly ask the child, the toddler, are you okay? But she doesn't hear the toddler respond. Then she hears a scream and the call ends. There was a nationwide, well, first a statewide search uh, for Carly. Uh, there was a lot of attention on social media for Carly, a lot of support, a lot of prayers I saw going out. Um, yeah, she had a lot of support. This got national news, national attention. Two days later, approximately two days later, Carly shows up to her parents' home. Um, authorities, of course, were called Run to the hospital. They say she was out of breath. They brought her to the hospital to check on her, released her. Uh, she said that she was kidnapped. She said that she did see a toddler walking along the highway. She was kidnapped by a man and a woman. She said she escaped at one point. They called her. Uh, she said there was no sexual assault that occurred. They fed her. Uh, the woman messed with her hair. And um, yeah, she you know she got away. She fought for her life, and she got away. This is her story. A lot, a lot is not adding up. A lot just does not make any sense to you, to me, or the authorities. The authorities, of course. Um, Search their phone records, search their text messages, search cameras. You know, they saw her exit her vehicle that night, uh, put on her hazard lights, and it looks like it appears someone picked her up. That was caught on the camera. Um, from our phone, the forensics on our phone, looks like she had blocked her boyfriend at one point and then unblocked him. Several Google searches about kidnapping, uh, bus routes, how to get away with theft, uh, the movie Taken, the movie Taken, which is about kidnapping and uh, trafficking, child trafficking. 
you know, this all happened a day before. These, these searches occurred a day before, were done a day before, which is either a coincidence or just <laughs> plain stupidity. I'll let you decide. You know, there's been different takes on this. People have different opinions. When she was a missing, there was a lot of outreach for people to pray, people to support. I think a GoFund was started. I don't know why a GoFund was started, but um, there was a lot of support. When she reappeared, there were a lot of people saying, respect our privacy. We don't need to know what happened. As long as she's back, your prayers were answered. Yeah, I got an issue for, with that. You know, I, I wasn't praying for her return anyway. Um, and not because I didn't care. It's that I'm really protective. Um, and I'm really responsible about what I pray for, what I pray over. And I got to know where my prayer is going because it has to be intentional. So when people make these posts on Facebook, quote, pray for me and don't ask me why. Man, I never pray. I never pray in that situation. I got to know why. Maybe I don't want to pray of that situation. Maybe I want it, want it to play out. Um, maybe you deserve whatever you got coming. Maybe the universe, God, is, uh, is allowing this to happen. I don't know. I'm not the judge, but I'm not just going to blindly pray. It has to be directed. It has to be focused. It has to be intentional. So I don't blindly pray just like... Just pray. I, I don't get that. So I've never participated in that. And uh, that's not saying I want something bad to happen, but I just got to know. I got to know what I'm praying about. You know, I don't even pray. Well, I rarely pray over my situations I've gone through in life. Rarely over a situation. What I do as is that God's will be done, that I have the endurance, strength to go through what I'm going to go through, and I come out on the other end wiser and more knowledgeable. That's what I do pray for over myself, over my own situations. Because I believe that some things I just got to go through. And... I'm willing to go through them because I do believe, I know that when I come out on the other side, I'm going to be a better person. And I know we can get caught up with feeling like, woe is me in the moment and this isn't fair and I shouldn't be going through this and take this away from me, take this thorn out of my side. I know we can be weak at times, but I don't know, man, for years, not for a number of years now, probably over 20 years, 25 years now, I've always uh, embraced that scripture. You know, what, what uh, you know, God told Paul, my, my grace is sufficient. And, um, Some things you just got to go through. And it's not as bad as you think it is. It's all about your perspective. So if I don't pray uh, for my own situation to go away, and I just pray for strength and endurance and power, why would I blindly pray over a stranger's situation? Man, I'm not getting in the middle of that. But uh, 
that you're supposed to go through the process. Like I said, it's not as bad as we think, but we live in the moment. And so, um, you know, people might say that's insensitive. Mm, to an extent, I guess. But I think it's very sane. You know, I think it's very realistic. And look, I'm still here, healthy, 47, um, living my best life. So it didn't take me out. And then killed me, whatever I was going through in life. So maybe uh, my theory works. Maybe the way I handle things works. So, but I know people who pray over their situation to remove it and they succumb to it. Or they look really bad and they're suffering. Yeah, some things, man, I'm just not going to fight. I'll just embrace it. I'll embrace the suffering, um, you know, or I move around. So if you're uncomfortable, move around. You know, that's my choice, though. But, um, yeah, man, I'm, it's just, uh, I just got a different perspective on it. So, you know, you had a lot of support. She had a lot of support out there. But let's be real. Carly's lying. She is. Carly is lying. And people have lied before. Black women, women, uh, black men, white men, any, you know, all people have lied. But it's the impact of your lie that, that can cause so much damage. Man, she actually had a statewide search for her. <laughs> she, uh, you know, and this was planned. This was premeditated. She did Google searches for Amber Alerts and uh, the rules around it, policy around Amber Alerts. So this is premeditated. Did she know it would be a statewide search? Yeah. For Amber Alert, to do a search for Amber Alert, she knew that. This is. It's premeditated. It's just calculated. And it appears that it was all over a cheating boyfriend. You know? I mean, look at that. When I say things aren't as bad as we think they are, think about that. Allegedly, she did all this. She went through all this because she wanted attention. That's what it is. She wanted attention from a cheating boyfriend. It's not that big of a deal. But we live in the moment so much <clears throat> that we can't see ahead. We can't see that this shall pass too. This is a process. I'm hurting right now, but this will pass. I'll be better in a week. I'll be better in three weeks. I'll be even better in three months. I might be fully healed in nine months. We can't get past ourselves. And so we do irrational things. And this is what she did. She did a irresponsible, childlike, irrational thing. And it got statewide, nationwide attention. Now, you know, she's, uh, she's tarnished her, her name, her character, her family's name, character. But even with that, it's not the end of the world. And so she, if she felt like she was really going through it with the cheating boyfriend thing, she's really going to be overwhelmed with the attention she's going to, negative attention she's going to get with this. You know, She's going to have to probably change her name, move out of state. That's going to follow her. People are going to recognize her face. They're going to recognize her name. That's going to follow her. She can't hide. And so she might have to change her identity if she chooses to do so. Or, hey, endure it, embrace it, own it. Don't let it destroy you. 
and say, hey, I messed up royally, but that's okay. I ain't running. I'm going to face it. Not, not only am I going to face it, man, I'm going to survive and thrive. And uh, I'm going to be a testimony, a living testimony. You know, she could take that route. But um, it's not as, things aren't as bad as we think they are. But I tell you what, one thing that stood out is the press conference. Her mom and dad with the press conference. Two things stood out. The mom uses her maiden name and her married name. I think it's Talithia Robinson Russell, I believe, or Talithia Smith Russell, something like that. Um, that's always a red flag for me when a woman holds on to her maiden name. For me, it shows defiance. It shows uh, unsubmissiveness. It shows that she's not really all in with the marriage, with the relationship. She's trying to hold on to a past life. And really, she should be separating herself from her parents and bonding and becoming one with the husband. But as long as you got that mate name, you're still connected to that past life. And you hadn't fully submitted to your husband. That's my take. It's always been my take on that. Um, case in point, Maybe this is connected during the press, press conference also. When the husband had his arm around her, around the wife, she shrugged off his arm. Now, this is on statewide national television. She shrugged off his arm. He was trying to console her, comfort her, had his arm around her. She shrugged him off. That's a bad sign. There's some dissension, uh, dissension there, contention, dissension. There's um, um, submissiveness there, some bitterness. Now, I don't know if they're in on this whole thing. And she was like, man, you're doing too much. It's already sold. You're overdoing it. It's hot out here. Or there's just dissension between them. And she's like, hey, man, we, we don't rock like that in our private life. So don't get on TV trying to be something you're not. You don't rock with me like that. I don't rock with you like that. Either way, that's a bad sign. Because she couldn't hold that in for a few minutes. To, to, you know, just to protect herself, her image, protect him, not look a certain way on national TV, she had to do that. Whether she was hot or irritated, she couldn't hold that in. She couldn't withstand that. That says a lot. That says a lot. I know men get this rap a bit narcissists, but there are narcissistic, narcissistic women out there as well. And, and the dynamics of her parents' marriage could, not could, does have a direct effect, effect on children, on Carly and her siblings. And uh, that's what this all. Yeah, this thing is so much deeper than what we see. And it's a distraction from us getting to the root of the problem. And all comes back down to family. All comes back to love, compassion, understanding. But on the surface, we're so focused on the surface, man, the kidnapping. Like nobody, the media's not going to do a deep dive to, to, to uh, promote or ignite healing. Just imagine that if there was a deep dive done on a national level into what I just stated. 
And there was some healing that came out of that, some understanding that came out of that. And this was presented to the nation, to the world, in a responsible way, in a loving, compassionate way. What kind of impact would that have on people? Think about that. They'll be so powerful, so impactful, so, so impressionable, but it won't happen. So it's up to people like me, up to people like you to do deep dives and go beyond the surface and uh, take the steps to promote and ignite healing amongst the people. But I tell you what's going on. There's a lot going on. And yeah, I want to get off a get off a Carly situation because I could go on and on about that. But I will pray for healing of the mind over her, over that situation, over the family. Um, people that are watching that situation experience the same thing from a family dynamic because I think it's all connected. How she responded to the cheating boyfriend, wanting attention. How the mother responds to the husband when he has his arm around her. All this is connected. Now people might say, man, you're reaching. No, I ain't reaching. I don't think that's a coincidence. How, how Carly relates and, and deals with situations with the opposite sex and her, how her mom deals with things. I don't think it's coincidence at all. You know, um, I think it's right on point. But we see a lot going on with women in general. And um, you got the, the young lady who's been detained uh, in Dubai for several months for screaming in public. Well, I saw some old video of her. She's been reckless, disrespectful, unagreeable uh, for a while. You know, this isn't her first go around. This is, this is her, this is what she does. So even to have the audacity to carry that behavior into a foreign country, man, that, that's pretty bold. That's pretty bold. And to think you would get away with it, that like you could just do this. And you got to know how strict Dubai is, or any foreign country is, you got to know it's very different than America, man. We get away with a lot. We had a, man, listen, we have a lot of liberties. And we take advantage of them. And, uh, other countries don't rock like that. And you got to know that. The WNBA player who was caught with the vapes, the marijuana vapes in Russia, a lot of audacity, no accountability. And you tried it. They try these things because they're women. Right. And they think, well, you're not going to penalize me the way you would penalize a man because I'm a woman. And to use my femininity and my gender to get out of these situations, I won't have to be accountable to full degree. And people ain't going for it. They're just not going for it. But we see it a lot. It's at an all-time high where women are just super ratchet, super disrespectful, no accountability, unorderly. It's at an all-time high. And this has been going on for a while. Um, I remember when I was a child, I wouldn't say a child. Well, yeah, when I was a child, you couldn't just get pornography. I mean, you had to kind of steal it from your stepfather, your father, your older brother, 
he got it some kind of way from somebody, his friend's father. It was, it was wild, man. The, the things you had to go through to get your hands a hold of some pornography. Um, and then I remember there was a transition in the 90s where you can get pornography, the magazine, the hustler, penthouse, uh, playboy, um, right in the convenience stores. They had them wrapped in plastic and they were right there in the magazine uh, stands in the convenience stores. And then you had where they had, you can call the 1-900 numbers, infomercials, the 1-900 number commercials that would come on late at night. So there was a progression of disorder, a progression of uh, no boundaries and, and breaking rules. There was a progression. It didn't, it didn't just happen overnight. You know, it was a process. And now, well, we'll, we'll go back a bit. And then you had Girls Going Wild, Freak Neek. Um, and now, man, you could just, you don't have to go through hoops to get pornography. It's, it's free. And now, it's right in your face. It's in the music. Don't even hide it. There used to be a time where you can have explicit content or sexual content in music, and you wouldn't even know what they were talking about. Like, adults wouldn't even know. It was so coded. And then they were like, damn, I didn't find out two years later that she was talking about this or he was talking about this. It was coded. There were boundaries. There was respect. But now it's all out there straight up. It's not coded, just straight up. Um, we've taken freedom of speech, of speech to a whole different level. And so what's going on, y'all, is we're moving away. We're transitioning from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Um, but I don't want you to panic. I don't want you to feel like, man, we're going into a dark ages. No, there's going to be some darkness about the age of Aquarius. There's going to be some light about it. Just like with the age of Pisces, there was light, there was darkness. And so, um, it's all about your perspective, but whatever age we're in, we got to stay grounded, principled, you know, remember the laws of the universe, remember um, to do the things that's going to keep us grounded, keep us focused, keep us disciplined and orderly, but also compassionate, forgiving and loving. Uh, so I don't care what age you're in, you need to fast. You need to pray. Um, you need to forgive. You need to practice the laws of the universe. You need to be disciplined, focused, mission bound, uh, fluid in some sense, steadfast in another sense, some other senses. No matter what, no matter what age you're in. The problem is when we go too left, you know, and we go too right. And um, it causes destruction and confusion. So in the age of Pisces, there was a lot of innovation. You know, the machine, the machine ruled. Um, a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of businesses, a lot of money was made. 
lot of order, um, religion took off over those last 2,000 years. We started looking at there being a higher power, something outside of us, something greater than self. And um, that could be a beautiful thing. Sometimes people felt it was too restrictive. It was too orderly. Um, there was a lot of racism. You know, when, you be, when you're too restrictive, you're not flexible, you're not fluid at all, it can cause a lot of addictions also in the world. And there was a lot of addiction in the world. Um, addicted to, people are addicted to sex, alcohol, food, go on and on. And so that's what happens when you're too restrictive. Because that's not how we're designed to be. Right? That restrictive, that orderly. You know, we have to be more compassionate. There wasn't a great deal of attention focused on self-care. Now, self-care, mental health, uh, physical health, spiritual health, this started coming to play in pieces throughout the last 50 years and some, some years and little bits and pieces, you know, before that. But now we head into full throttle because we're moving into the age of Aquarius. And so when you go from one age to another age, it doesn't just happen overnight. It's like going from spring to summer. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, I know astrologists or meteorologists, they give you a date, okay, when, when, we're in summer now, okay. But you start seeing signs of you going into summer before you actually hit summer, right? Before you fully into the summer season. Uh, you'll still know it's spring when you're in spring, but you'll start seeing summer's coming. And that's, that's just what it is. Same going from summer to fall and fall to winter. You start seeing signs before you actually get into that season. And there's no difference between the ages. So, you know, we, we start seeing little stuff happening, showing, hey, we're about to switch ages. But now we're about to fully be into it. And um, there were some good things that happened. I mean, you know, um, some of the darkness in the age of Pisces, like I said, alcoholism, uh, fanatics with religion, you know, um, the idea of guilt and suffering is related to spirituality. Yeah, we've been we've been tricked while we was in the age of Pisces, man. Even Mother Teresa, you know, tricked a lot of people. She would tell kids that were hungry that they must have done something wrong or they didn't give enough if they didn't have enough to eat. She would tell people who were suffering um, physically or medically that to suffer, to go through it. But as soon as she had some issues physically, she went straight to modern medicine. You know, uh, we were told in the age of Pisces that we would have to die to have heaven. And then you start seeing brothers like Reverend Ike, who was outcasted, start saying, no, you do not have to die. <laughs> just have heaven. You don't. But well, information was not shared in the age of Pisces. And sometimes I wonder, did these religious leaders know, have an understanding, or they purposely withheld the information? But, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing to me to see the transition T.D. Jakes is making. So I don't know if he's always known the truth and the balance we should have 
or was he just working the system? And he transitioned and changes the tone of his ministry as the ages were transitioning. Who knows? But yeah, it's, it's a hell of a transition he, he's making. And uh, he's even going to start speak, speak out against the irresponsible woman. And he would never do that for decades. He catered, pandered to women. So I don't know if it was a hustle or not. I don't want to condemn, convict the man, but uh, I'm not going to absolve him from any responsibility also. And, uh, so we'll just give it the benefit of the doubt. But regardless, yeah, information was withheld in the age of Pisces. Um, so it had its darkness, it had its light. Now the thing with the age of Aquarius, you know, some of the light is um, discovery, innovation, like I said, self-care, ideas, cooperation, brotherhood, um, information is shared, personal and intellectual freedom. Information is out here so much, I mean, it's, it's shared so, so freely. But like I said before, what's the darkness of that? Got all, all information shared so freely. The information that could be detrimental to us, that could be poisonous and toxic to us and to the kids. And, and that's the thing. And I guess, can we say, hey, just share <laughs> the righteous, the fruitful information, and we're not going to share the toxic, detrimental information? That's going to be impossible to do. And so I don't even think we should be focused on that so much. Uh, should be focused on pushing back some of the toxicity. But the main thing is knowing what's going on and knowing how to maneuver and adapt and where you, what role you play in this. Hey, man, it's a real thing, man. Let me tell you. All the billionaires study astrology. If you're religious, Jesus was into astrology. The Bible is astrology. It's mathematics, it's astrology. It's law. It's love, compassion, grace, mercy. It's all that. Spirituality, religion, it's all that. And if you shun one of those things, you're kind of limiting yourself. And, and if you elevate one thing above all too much, like you're limiting yourself too. You're doing yourself a disjustice and injustice also. But everything's important. Um, spirituality rules. And uh, you can't hide behind spirituality also because you'll have some people who will say they're spiritual. But man, they do the most reckless and irresponsible things. And what you'll discover sometimes is they want to be labeled spiritual because they don't want rules. They don't want order. They don't want accountability. And so they live on grace, forgiveness, mercy, but they don't want to live under the law. And uh, yeah, they don't want accountability. So they'll say they're spiritual and religion brings accountability. It brings law, brings order. And so religion, um, is needed, you know, spirituality definitely is needed, but the natural combined with the spiritual is Christ consciousness. Yeah. 
So we can't dismiss religion. We can't dismiss spirituality. They're both needed. We need rules. We need order, which is Pisces. We need freedom. We need open-mindedness, which is Aquarius. Now, if you even if you know a, a woman who's an Aquarius, you'll know, man. She's free-spirited. She's open-minded. It's kind of quirky, hard to peg. She's different. Yeah, they 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 different. <laughs> um, and that's cool. But we can't go too far into that. What I have in order also. We must have order. And we can't go too far into order and rigidness and discipline without having some flexibility, some compassion, some forgiveness. But yeah, this is what you said. Why, this is why, why you said the influx and the resurgence of the woman, the liberated woman, uh, just wilding out here, man. Women are wilding out here. It's, it's, it's at an all time high. But the smoke will clear. It'll get settled somewhat. It takes time. You know, it's like hitting the summer. When you first hit the summer, you got to adapt to the heat. You got to adapt, man. And um, you got to adapt to what the summer does to your body and to your mind, to your spirit, what each season does to you. You got to adapt. And it takes some adapting you have to go through. You know, a few days, a few weeks to get acclimated. And so that's the thing that's going on now. We, we got to get acclimated to this age of Aquarius we're transitioning into. And, and we will. Um, but yeah, that, that's, the, that's the dark side, man. That's the dark side of Aquarius. You know, um, you know. Politically, Black Lives Matter and all these other groups like that were birthed because we went too rigid a lot of times in the age of Pisces. So these things were birthed. But then we went too far, man. We went too far where they were beating us in the head with open-mindedness and acceptance and tolerance. They were just beating us over the head like you had to accept this. You had to see this on TV. So then you started seeing a lot of people re rejecting it because it was too imbalanced. So you got a lot of people politically that became conservative that had been um, liberals. You got a lot of people that became Republicans who had been Democrats. And it's all because we went too far left sometimes, went too far right. There was no balance. And that's what I'm telling you, no matter what age we're in, no matter what age we're transitioning to, man, try to stay balanced. Try to stay balanced. And um, it's a hell of a time to be in, man. That's how you gotta look at it. It's a great time. You're in the middle of the ages transitioning and you have an opportunity to make your mark in two ages. That's a beautiful time. It's a beautiful time to be in. Um, yeah, so don't fear, fellas. You're gonna see a lot of stuff coming from certain types of men, women, uh, but it's okay. Stand your ground, stand in your principles. And uh, for the women who listen, this is going to be a time where you're going to get a lot of freedom. I think generally speaking, women don't like order, they don't like accountability, they don't like discipline. Um, rule, structure, logic, generally speaking. So this is going to be a time, this is going to be age where you really get to flex. And a lot is going to be allowed and tolerated. 
Um, Divine femininity is going to be on display. Yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a time. But the woman who really, really stands out is going to be the woman who can merge and combine divine femininity with grace. Yeah, that's what's missing from the average woman is grace. There's a lot of women with femininity. They consider femininity. Um, and being sexual, being promiscuous, revealing certain body parts and walking a certain way, that doesn't really define femininity as a, as a whole. I guess it could be a part of it. Um, but the woman who can combine grace with it, she's going to stand out above all the women. Facts. Facts, man. And fellas, just think about it, man. When's the last time or how often do you see a graceful woman? Like, how often do you see a graceful woman? Not just a feminine woman. I'm talking about a great, that's a different level, man. I'm talking about grace. Like, Angela Bassett. That's grace. Um, I'll put Alfred Woodard in there, man. Grace. Uh, No, I forgot the lady hell, who just died. Who played Miss Miss Pitts? She used to date Sydney Portier back in the day. She just passed recently. Man, was in some Tyler Perry movies. Damn, my a name slipped in my mind. But anyway, that's Grace. Um, Alicia Rashad, man, she's graceful to me. You know, so it's a woman. It's a woman out there. You know, but these are older women. You know, they're old enough to be my mom. Um, but where's the graceful woman? That's the woman who's really going to stand out. So, you know, women, you know, men, if you plan on having kids, bringing kids into this world, just be conscious of what's going on with Adrian, what challenges you're going to face. Um, what rewards the good corner and who's going to stand at the top? You know, what qualities it's going to take to stand at the top? Got to be cognizant of this. But yeah, this is a beautiful time. This is, we're witnessing history, man. Like this is, this is a great time to be in. Great time. Don't think of it. Don't think of this time as being scary. You're gonna see some wild stuff. I promise you, man. It's just getting started. You're gonna see some wild stuff. Sukiana's ain't nothing, man. Uh, Kim Kardashian putting in work on tape. That ain't nothing. Like right, you're gonna see some wild stuff. But knowing is power and being able to adapt and adjust, but keeping your core principles intact and standing on the square. So let me know what y'all think, toasters. From me to you, love. Peace.